My first factory tour was from Leo Fender, and uh, I've been hooked ever since. He was all about how the guitar was made. Where I was about the guitar itself, he was like how it got to become a guitar, right? So here's how we hold it, here's how we cut it. I was always the kid, right, growing up with the, you get the new Legos. Most people follow the instructions and build what was supposed to be the picture on the box. I went, awesome, more parts to build my own thing. If we could make a modern acoustic, what would we do? There's no rules. We're a new generation that has permission to think a new way. Part of the design philosophy was, I watched modern players play. Styles have blurred, right, and merged, and new styles are emerging. So what if we could make an instrument that fueled that? I had a couple things that really were important. It had to be a Fender guitar, easy to play, awesome feeling. It had to make a really great sound on your lap, right? I wanted the on-lap experience. Oh, and by the way, it's got world-class electric sounds because we're Fender. Kind of looked around and went, ah, Tim Shaw's in Nashville. Hey, Tim, I have this idea. It's kind of crazy. We have known of each other for years, but we hadn't worked together. And the minute we started working together, it was like working with my brother. And we've been able to really cooperate on this because we know where the other guy's coming from. Brian had an idea. Brian, Josh, and I sat down literally on the floor with a piece of paper and sketched out how this guitar was going to function. Sketches turned into 3D drawings. It was awesome because it had a vision and they were cutting wood. We created the first proof of concept body. Uh, it didn't have a sound port yet. It did have the forearm contour and it uh, had the inset top. Um, and you could tap on it and realize, man, this thing rings like a cajon. We talked about the resonances and how we were gonna maximize performance in this. And that was one of the things that really intrigued me about the process, was the ability to have something that responded like an acoustic guitar, but was only an inch and three quarters thick. So we ended up experimenting with the diameter of the port and the depth of the port. I got to a point where I put things back together and went, oh, okay, there we are, stop there. Spruce and mahogany, that's our formula, we love that. Uh, and this is how we're gonna, we're gonna do the body. And then the next challenge was uh, giving it its voice. I like to talk about the story as a, if you think about a singer-songwriter, you, you, you sit at home and you, you write what you think is a good song. You get brave and you share it with somebody, right? And that person then goes, it's pretty cool, I like that, I like the hook. You know, the second verse could be a little better. And if you trust them, you let them write, rewrite the second verse, right? The song gets better. It was like, okay, who do we, we, we play the song for next? Larry Fishman. Brian called and told me that he was working on a project. He was working with Tim Shaw on a new guitar concept that was going to require a big leap in electronics. And he said, Larry, I think you're the guy to do it. So we sent him one and uh, he was like, this thing really does something. You know, and it, it does something really unique acoustically. It's a great guitar first. Awesome, he validated that point. Tim and Brian designed a guitar that was highly feedback resistant, yet sensitive enough to be played acoustically. Sort of the perfect performance platform that allowed us to do our work without the guitar getting in the way. He's like, what do I have to work with? And we said, well, we want a volume knob, a mod knob, and a five-way switch. You're crazy. <laughs> and they're asking, some very, very uh, breakthrough and special things. And we could do a lot of them at the time, but some we couldn't. We got the invitation to go back to the Fishman headquarters and, and sit in Larry's lab and hear it for the first time. We had everything set up. We had a lot of sounds to pick from. And we spent a couple of days auditioning the sound choices that would go into this guitar and tweaking them and volume levels and uh, EQ and so forth. And it was one of those moments that you'd never forget. Uh, here was our, our love child 
and it had all these wires coming out of it because none of the electronics were on board yet. They were all out external. And there was a series of analog and digital boxes all daisy chained together. The development guitar was the biggest Frankenstein you ever saw in your life. We had stomp boxes taped to the outside. We had things on the floor, things in the computers. And the first strum, I remember looking at Tim almost with tears in my eyes. The initial core, the first thing we heard, was just amazing. We looked at each other and went, okay, this is really gonna work. And my heart stopped. It was relief, it was euphoria, it was, I can't wait for other people to hear this. I see a lot of hard work from a lot of talented people. We were knocked out. At the end of the day, the performance of this instrument far exceeded the expectation that we had going into it. And I've never seen a room full of bigger smiles from so many people in our life. We looked around at each other and everybody went, no one's ever heard this. We kind of knew at the moment we had a game changer. We should make this in Corona. This should be at the heart of Fender, be a USA made modern acoustic. And that's where the symphony gets even bigger. How should it be built? And how should we manufacture it and put it in production? So Fred added all this new dimension to it, just help refine uh, design ideas into things that were manufacturable. And so we built a world-class cell to do just this. Uh, we've got staff that make these that are exclusive to the uh, Acoustasonic Telecaster. It's huge. This is the sound that I've heard in my head for 40 years, and it's here. You can't get a bad sound out of this thing, and that's part of the deal with Fender. That's part of the things, one of the things I love about Fender, is that when you plug a Fender into almost anything, immediately you get a sound you can use and a sound that'll make you want to play music. You know, the music that this guitar will make will influence the next generation. So ultimately, it's for players that want to be inspired.